Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Now in this video we are going to discuss uh, the velocity of transverse wave in a string. Now in your NCRT textbook, uh, the derivation for velocity of transverse wave in a string is given dimensionally and in some other books it is given like V is directly proportional to square root of T uh, tension and V is inversely proportional to square root of M where M is the mass per unit length and uh, then therefore V is directly proportional to square root of T by M that kind of derivation is given. But uh, what is the standard derivation and uh, see this video is not like to teach you how to derive but to, to teach you like how to find tension in a curved portion of a string okay and uh, finally get the result of velocity of transverse wave in a, a string okay now see uh, if this is a string now fix at both ends okay now when transverse waves are formed in the string now it uh, these are the formation of transverse wave in a string so the string uh, bends like this now suppose for this part if i zoom in so suppose this is the arc it is forming an arc okay and this is the string okay and so for this arc suppose this is the center o oh, for this arc okay now as we know in a string the tension is always tangential to the length of the string and it will be same at each and every point okay so uh, and since the string is identical, so I need to have same tension at all points. So uh, tension will be tangential. So I am calculating tension at these two points. So I am drawing two tangents. Okay. So this is tension T and this is tension T. And uh, this is one horizontal line. Okay. And uh, so for this part, as you can see this is symmetric. So this angle is theta, this angle is also theta. Okay. Now suppose this is A B, okay, A and B are the two points at which I am drawing the tangent, okay. So this is A B in this part, A B is this part, okay, this part I have zoomed in, okay. So and uh, this tangent is at this particular point, okay. Now as you can see, see if I move these two points closer and closer, okay. So this theta will keep on decreasing. Now, if A and B are at the same location, this theta, this angle will become zero, and this tension will become this directional tension will become horizontal. Okay, if it becomes horizontal, so directional tension will make an angle zero degree with the horizontal line, and this angle is also zero. Okay, so that means this similarly. So if the if the converse, if I move this point farther and farther, so this angle will keep on increasing this direction, and similarly this angle, this angle and this angle will keep on increasing at the same rate. So these two angles, this angle and this angle, they will be equal. Similarly, this angle and this angle will also be equal. Okay. So now this is t, this is theta. So this will be uh, t cos theta. Similarly, for this t, this will be t cos theta. And for this t cos theta, similarly, one t, t sin theta component will be in this direction, radial direction. For t cos theta, again, one t cos theta component will be in this direction. So let us take that component in this direction it to be so 1 t sin theta from this side 1 t sin theta from this side so this is twice t sin theta now it is acting along the radial direction it is acting along the radial direction now as you can see this t cos theta and t cos theta they are acting in horizontal direction but they are in opposite direction so they will cancel out so the net force produced on this part it will be due to this 2 t sin theta okay now for this uh, arc uh, since it is bent, bending and it is forming like a part of a circle, so it is acted upon by a radial force. Okay, so and that radial force is provided by this 2t sin theta. Or conversely, we can say that this 2t sin theta is responsible for uh, a radial force. Okay, since it is acting along the radial direction. So for this AB segment, if I take the mass to be dm and this radius to be R. Okay. So in that case, this radial force, radial force, it will be dm v square by r, dm v square by r, mv square by r, radial force mv square, centripetal force mv square by r. So m is dm, dm is the segment of this ma, ab. Okay. So I can write, so this 2t sin theta is responsible for the radial force. So I will write 2t sin theta is equal to dm v square by r 
first okay now as we have seen see this is a very small segment and I have zoomed in so that means this angles are very small so for small angle I can replace uh, th sin theta by theta so this theta being small I am replacing this sin theta by theta theta is small so this becomes 2t theta is equal to dm v square by r okay now if this see this total angle is 2 theta r is the radius okay so angle 2 theta is equal to arc length a b by radius r angle equal to arc length by radius okay now if uh, say mu is the mass per unit length okay it is mass per unit length if mu is the mass per unit length i can replace this dm dm is the mass of dm is the mass of this segment ab so dm can be replaced by mu times ab mu times ab that is the length of the segment and what is ab ab is 2 theta into 2 theta into r so i can replace replace this dm as mu times 2 theta into r this ab is 2 theta into r so dm is equal to mu into 2 theta into r so i can substitute that value over here so this 2 t theta is equal to mu times 2 theta r v square by r so this r r cancels out this 2 2 theta theta also gone so we have t is equal to mu times v square or v is equal to t by mu square out of this so here t is the tension and mu is the mass per unit length okay so this is the deduction for uh, velocity of transverse wave in a string but uh, more than the deduction this co concept is very important like how to find tension on bend strings so i hope this concept is clear to you now based on this concept uh, this concept will be useful for solving few you can find such questions in Erod of in uh, topic of circular motion, in topics of electrostatics. In electrostatics, if you have a charge ring, and uh, the ring is charged, and uh, at the center also there is a charge, and if you are asked to calculate the force or tension on the ring, you can use this concept. Similarly, if you have a circular ring, and uh, the ring is ro rotating, and you are asked to calculate the tension in the uh, ring, you can use this concept. Okay, so I hope uh, this. Uh, is uh, beneficial for you and uh, uh, you do well in your academic endeavor. My best wishes. Good luck.